Hi, it's Clayton from Australian Direct, and I'd like to talk about solar controllers, otherwise known as solar regulators. Now, I'm going to refer to them from now on as solar controller, but you can call them either or. The purpose, the simple purpose of a solar controller is to essentially maintain the charge coming from your solar panel bank through to your battery bank and ensure that your batteries don't overcharge and are being charged as best as they can be from your solar panel bank. Now I'm going to explain to you simply in the workshop what happens if you don't use a solar controller. Let's imagine hypothetically this is your solar panel putting out non-stop charge. It doesn't know how much charge your batteries need. It's not smart. It's just putting out charge non-stop. Especially our kick-ass solar panels by the way because they're awesome. So if you don't have a solar controller in place the solar panels will charge and charge and charge the batteries and they won't know when to stop. So it's going to kind of be like this. Balloon is your battery. Now that's not good. Your batteries are destroyed. You need a solar controller. So simply, what does a solar controller do? Solar controllers are smart like me. They know when your battery is getting full, they know when the battery is completely full, and when some power goes out of your battery, they know to charge it back up again. So it's something like this. I'm the solar panel and the solar controller at the same time. I'm really smart. I know that the balloon's getting full. Because I'm smart, I know that it's now full. Now, the battery's charged. But if some power goes out of the battery, I'm smart. I'm going to blow it back up again. That's the job of a solar controller. It's going to ensure that your batteries are charged to their maximum capacity with none of this stuff. Bang! All right, now let's get into the nitty gritty about the difference between the different types of solar controllers such as PWM, MPPT, and some of their features. The previous section, the, the blowing up balloons bit was fun and are hopefully educational, but let's get down to the serious part of this video. We actually talk about the difference between the two types of solar controllers, the sizing and the functions that they have. So the first type is the older technology, which is PWM, which stands for pulse width modulation. These are an older type of controller. They're still very functional and they work very, very well. So if you're on a budget, there's no reason you can't go for these controllers. Now, on our site at the moment, we have a 10 amp and a 30 amp. Now, the different sizes of the controllers, i.e. whether they're a 10 amp or a 30 or a 40 or a 60 amp, is dependent on how big a solar array you want. So the bigger amount of the larger solar array you have, the more watts, the bigger controller you need to handle it. So you'll see this is a small one, which is 10 amps and a 30 amp in the PWM. You'll see that these units have a display on them that will show you the voltage of the solar panels. They'll show you uh, how much charge is going through to your batteries. And they've got functions in them such as a day-night sensor. So you can set them to turn a light on at night time. So originally controllers were used a lot for street lighting. So they'll set the controller up so when there's no light on the solar panel it'll assume it's night time and it will turn the output on. Uh, so there's a heap of settings inside of these controllers to show you a whole heap of information via the screens okay and there's lots of information on the website about that. I'm not going to get into sizing your solar controllers because we do have a spec table on the website but essentially you want to make sure that your solar controller can handle the amount of solar input that you have. So please check that on the website and also think forward. You can never have a controller that's too big. Obviously they're more expensive when you buy a bigger one, but if you're planning on maybe upgrading the system at some time, then you can always buy a bigger controller and future-proof yourself. So PWM, been around for a long time, works very, very well. As I said, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty. You can Google uh, PWM or MPPT, which I'm gonna talk about next, and do your own research to find out the difference. MPPT controllers, or maximum power point tracking, are the latest technology in solar controllers, and these units will ensure that you get the maximum charge from your solar panels through to the batteries being charged. Yes, they are a little more expensive. If you can afford them, I suggest you go for them. If you're gonna be eating porridge because you spent too much money, then you can go for the PWM. 
Hypothetically, you can get up to an extra 30% charge rate by using MPPT controllers. Now these particular units are made by EP Solar, a very trusted brand. Actually, all the controllers we do here, except the projector ones I'll talk about in a minute, are EP Solar. And they're available, of course, in a range of sizes. Here we have a 10 amp, a 20 amp, and a 40 amp. And that depends on how large your solar array is. And remember, it's always good to future-proof. You think you might want to add some solar panels later, no harm in upsizing your controllers, one that's a bit bigger than you need at the moment. These units are programmable. You'll see they have screens built in, which gives you your voltage at the solar panel, how much charge you're getting, the voltage at your batteries, that's all built in there. Now, there might be a situation where you want to put this in a cupboard or somewhere where you can't see it. So as an optional extra for the MPPT units, there's a remote display. Now, this remote display comes in a housing, so if you want to surface mount it, you can, or you can take it out of the housing and you can flush mount it neatly and put it somewhere where it's easy to see. This also gives you some additional programming options, and they're absolutely fantastic for a neat installation. They come with a cable to connect them to the bottom of the controller. You see at the bottom here you have a COM port to plug them into, so they're an optional accessory and really handy. The next type of controller we have on the website are our projected DC-DC chargers. Now these DC-DC chargers primary function is to assist in charging from your start battery in your vehicle or alternator charging through to an auxiliary battery and they handle all of the charging and boost the charging and so very very popular for wiring in vehicles and if you want to learn more about that please watch our ultimate dual battery system video. Uh, these have an MPPT controller built into them also. So if you want to wire up your vehicle for charging, you can also consider going to one of these DC-DC chargers by projector. And there's lots of information on the website about these. On the website as well, we've also got our battery boxes. Now these boxes are available on their own, or you can put your own battery inside of the box, or you can buy it with one of our batteries inside or with a wiring kit. So it's a, a complete situation that will give you a solution that will give you everything you need. And there's more videos about that on the website, especially the ultimate dual battery system video. And these already have your solar uh, plugs connected in here. You can plug in with an Anderson for your solar and your alternator input and they've got voltmeters and all that kind of stuff. So that's another option uh, if you're looking for a solar controller. Now quickly, how to wire one up is very, very simple. So if we can just get a zoom in, Mr. Video Man, and it's the same across the range. You'll see here that we've got solar panel input, positive and negative. So your solar panel is gonna plug into that. Then battery, this is the battery being charged, positive and negative. Then you've got an output here. So these units will actually read how much power is being drawn. But remember, you can only run devices through these. So if you're running accessories or lights or running any devices through the output panel on here, you can only draw as much as the size of the controller. So if you've got a 10 amp controller, you can't draw more than 10 amps through it. If you've got a 40 amp controller, you can't draw more than 40 amps. But anything that goes through this output, you can actually see how much power is being taken out, how much is coming in from the solar panel. So very handy. If you do want to run high powered devices such as inverters or you know, super high powered, anything that's 12 volt, uh, then I suggest you connect that directly to the battery. You won't get a reading then, of course, how much power you're taking out, but it's still a handy function for those who want to use it. That's pretty much wrapping up the solar controllers. You need to connect them up from your solar panel, solar controller to your battery system. Now, our kick-ass solar panels, our standard glass ones actually have a, a solar controller built in, a PWM. Some customers want to upgrade them to MPPT. And if you were to buy one of our canvas solar panels, you have the option of buying the canvas panel on its own with the PWM controllers, actually slightly different one than this, or with the MPPT, you've got your choice. Uh, so if you've got your own solar panels, make sure that you connect to your battery through a solar controller. If you've got any questions or you want to learn more, uh, there's lots of specifications and as I said, details on how many watts each controller uh, can handle. Please look at the specifications on the website and if you need any help, look up to the top of the page, there's our phone number or click on contact us and send us an email. We've got staff who are highly trained and happy to help. I'm Clayton and thanks for watching.